Hello, welcome to uh, the session for advanced mathematics one. Today we are going to see two questions. The first question on coordinate geometry one and question on the coordinate geometry one in uh, advanced secondary exams come question number eight. Uh, our question has uh, four parts. The first part of the question, which is part A, says find the equation of a line which is perpendicular by sector of a line joining the given point. We need to find the equation of a line one, which is perpendicular by sector of the line two, which joins the point uh, A with coordinate one comma three and coordinate point B with coordinate five comma Five. Uh, the information that we had is this line one is the perpendicular bisector of line two. That means if this is line one, uh, this is say line two joining the two points A, which the coordinate one comma three, and point B with the coordinate five comma five, and the second line, which is line one in our case, I, I just named it line one. Is the perpendicular bisector, which means that it intersects the, uh, the line two at right angle, and because it is the perpendicular bisector, means that it divides this, uh, the, the line AB into two equal halves. That means the distance from here up to this point is the same as distance from the point of intersection to point B. Uh, so this is uh, line two, and because this is uh, the perpendicular bisector, we can just find the, the, the point of intersection which is here, x comma y. So the point of intersection, uh, point of intersection, intersection is just the midpoint, midpoint of the line AB. So if you can manage to find the midpoint of AB, it's just the point of intersection between uh, these two lines. Now, what is uh, the formula for finding midpoint? We know that midpoint is given as just the x1 plus x2 divided by 2, uh, comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2. This is the formula for finding the midpoint. Now we have this point, we can call it as x1, y1. And we have this point, we can call it as x2, y2 to get uh, the middle point, which is the midpoint. So our midpoint now will be equals to our x1 in this case is 1, and our x2 is, is 5. So it's just 1 plus 5 divided by 2, comma. Uh, our y1 is 3 and y2 is 5, so it is 3 plus 5, 3 plus 5 divided by 2, and this is equal to uh, 1 plus 5 is 6, 6 divided by, by 2, 3, so we have 3, uh, 3 plus 5, 8 divided by 2, 4, so we have the midpoint which is 3 comma 4. Now this point we have exactly now it is 3 comma 4, that is the point of intersection between the two lines. And again, uh, because the two lines are the perpendicular uh, lines, so since, just right, since line one is perpendicular to line two, uh, we have the conditions that if we take the gradient of the first line, multiply by the gradient of the second line, the answer is negative one. So we, 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 we check the, uh, the condition, or the possibility of getting either gradient of the first line, of the second line, or of the first line. And in order to get the gradient, we need to have at least two points. So we have the, this point and this point joining these two line, the line. So we can use this uh, point A and B to get the gradient of the uh, second line, and use this condition, that is the perpendicularity condition, to get the gradient of the line L1. So from this case, but gradient M2 of the line 2 is just the change in Y coordinate divided by change in X coordinate. And this is nothing but it is just Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. That is how we can 
obtain the gradient of a line. And this is equal to our y2 in this case is 5. Uh, so 5 minus 3 is 5 minus 3 divided by x2 is 5, x1 is 1. So it is 5 minus 1. And this is equal to 2 divided by 4, which is equal to a half. That is gradient of the second line. So this means that now m2, m1 times the second uh, gradient of the second line, which is a half, equals to negative 1. This implies that the gradient m, m1 now will be equals to uh, negative 2. So after getting the gradient, we finalize our question by uh, finding the equation of the line. We need the equation of this uh, perpendicular bisector. In our case, is equation of line 1. So recall the equation of a line uh, is given as taking y equals to gradient times x minus uh, x1 plus y1. So in this case, this will be equals to, now this x1 and y1 is the point that is lies in a given line, the line that we need to find its equation. So for sure, the a point which lies in uh, line L1 is this 3, 4. So we use this 3, 4 as our x1, uh, y1. So this will be gradient, which is negative 2, times x minus x1, which is now 3, 3 plus y1, which is now 4. This will be equals to uh, negative 2x plus 6 plus 4. And finally, we have negative 2x plus 10, which is now equals to y, which is the required equation of a line. Of course, we can write in different forms this equation. We can write as, this is just the same as writing uh, 2x plus y minus 10 equals to 0. We can write in that form or in this uh, general form uh, all mean the same thing. So that is how we can get the equation of a perpendicular bisector of a line joining two points A comma B. Uh, what is important here, we used uh, the concept of midpoint to get the point of intersection, uh, which is the only point lying on the line L1. And again, we use the concept of perpendicular lines to get the gradient of this line L1, because the only gradient that we can get direct is the gradient of line 2. So we use this gradient M2 to get M1. After then, we just substituted in the, uh, uh, in the formula for equation, and we get the required result. So that is the first part of our uh, question number one today. Now let's see the second part, part B. Uh, the second part of this question is uh, prove that the perpendicular distance, or sometimes we call it the shortest distance of the point x comma y, uh, the point P is x comma y, we are required to prove that uh, uh, its distance from the equation, from the line, the line uh, AX, uh, AX plus BY plus C equals to zero. Uh, just to avoid confusion, I can just rename this as X1 comma Y1. And, and of course, we can now get what we need here. So we, we need to prove the distance, the perpendicular distance. Uh, the shortest distance is given by just the ax1 plus by1 plus c divided by square root of a, uh, a squared plus b squared. We need to prove that the uh, perpendicular distance or shortest distance from the line ax plus by plus c equals to zero to this point p with coordinate x1 comma y1 is given by this formula. So we can approach this question as follows. We can sketch, so see the sketch diagram. Uh, diagram below. We can sketch just in an xy plane like this. Uh, no, this is x. Uh, this is y axis, and this is x axis. Just assuming that the uh, this equation has negative gradient, so it has this nature. I can just call maybe this is uh, x. Uh, AX plus BY plus 
C equals to zero, which is the line which we need to find its perpendicular distance from this point. The point is perpendicular to this line, so we, I can say this is our point P with coordinate x1, comma y1. Uh, that means uh, this is the point. It joins the given line at a right angle. That is why it is called the perpendicular distance. Now, uh, Now suppose this point, where the point, the, the, the point P joins to, say, point B, we can call it uh, point B with the coordinate, uh, uh, say, x2, comma y2, means that this point is x2, and this is x1. On y-axis, this will be y1, and this will be y2. That is, of course, what we have. Now, suppose this angle now is angle theta, angle made between the uh, line joining the point P to uh, line a, AX plus BY plus C equals to zero. So, assuming that this is, uh, this is uh, angle theta. Now, using that sketch diagram, we can show that uh, the distance is given by the given formula. Now, we can just use the basic trigonometry from there. Uh, we just recall what is sine and what is cos of an angle theta. Now from the figure, now uh, consider, say, triangle. I can call maybe this point Q. Now I can just call, consider the triangle PQB, which is this triangle now. Uh, just this triangle. The angle is theta. Here is P, here is Q, and this is B. The distance from P to Q, from P, uh, P to Q is just X2 minus X1, so I can just put here X2 minus X1. And the distance from Q to B, from Q to B is just the same as interval from Y1 to Y2, which is now uh, Y2 minus Y1. Now, using this data, we can say, uh, if we need, say, cosine of an angle theta, we know that cosine is just adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And in this case, this will be equals to adjacent will be x2 minus x1 divided by um, the hypotenuse here is the distance that we need, the, the perpendicular distance or the shortest distance d. So this is over d. Now from here, we can, this, we can just write this equation as uh, x2 minus x1 equals to d times cosine of an angle theta. And that means if you need uh, x2, this will be equals to x1 plus d cosine of an angle theta. We can call it this equation, say, number 1. That is by using the uh, trigonometry of cosine, cosine of an angle theta. So from here, we get the expression for uh, x2. Using the same concept, let's find uh, tan of an angle, uh, sine of an angle theta. Uh, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And this is nothing but it is opposite of angle theta is y2 minus y1 divided by the hypotenuse, which is d. Now, making y2 the subject here, we'll get y2 will be equals to uh, y1 plus d sine of an angle theta. We can call it this equation number two. For sure, equation one and two gives the values of x2 and y2 respectively. And from our sketch diagram, the point x2, y2 lies in this line with the equation ax plus by plus c equals to zero. That means point, uh, the point x2, y2 satisfies this equation. If the point lies in a given line, it means the point satisfies the, the given equation. So, uh, since we just write the since uh, x2 comma y2 lies on the ax plus by plus c equals to zero, uh, thus it satisfies the equation. It satisfies the equation. Which means if we substitute it into, into this equation, we get uh, a correct inequality. 
So that means we can substitute the uh, equation, uh, expression for x2 and the y2 into this equation. Now that means we substitute, uh, say, equation now, equation 1 and 2 into the equation ax plus by plus c equals to 0. That means wherever there is x, we put x2, and wherever there is y, we put y2 in this equation. Okay. Now, making such substitution, we now get <coughs> the reason for substituting this is that the point lie in a given equation that means uh, the point satisfies uh, the given equation. So we now have a times x our x now is x2 which is x1 plus d cosine of an angle theta plus b times y, y uh, our y now becomes y2 which is y1 plus d sine of an angle theta plus c equals to 0. So we just do the normal algebra, opening the bracket here, we'll get ax1 plus d, uh, that is a times d cosine of an angle theta plus b y1 plus b d sine of an angle theta plus c equals to 0. Because our intention is to get the, the, the distance d, uh, we can just collect the like terms. So we have d out a cosine of an angle theta plus b sine of an angle theta will be plus ax1 plus by1 plus c equals to 0. So this means uh, d into a cos of an angle theta plus b sine of an angle theta will be equals to taking all this on the other side of equa equation we have negative ax1 plus by1 plus c equals to zero and then we divide by a cos of an angle theta plus b sine of an angle theta divide by a of course this is not equal to zero uh, a cos of an angle theta plus b sine of an angle theta. So this cancel, we now have d, which is the required distance, equals to negative ax1 plus b y1 plus c divided by a cos of an angle theta plus b sine of an angle theta. Okay, so up to that point, we can uh, recall, uh, rename this equation as equation, say, number three. So in our expression that we need to show there is no cos theta and sine theta. We need to find the substitution for uh, cos theta and sine theta so as to make our expression uh, to get rid of this expression for cos and sine. Now, but from the equation ax squared ax plus by plus c equals to zero, we can just make a wider subject in order to know what is exactly the gradient of this line. So making y the subject, we'll get by equals to negative ax minus c, divided by b, divided by b, divided by b. So here means that y equals to negative a divided by b times x minus c over b. This implies that the gradient m of this line is negative a over b. That is the gradient m of this line, which means after making uh, why the subject we just compare with the general equation of a line which is y equals to mx plus c. We can see m which is the gradient correspond to this value negative a over b. And if that's the case, uh, but we ex uh, of course we know the gradient of a line is also equals to tan of that of an angle theta. So using that concept So, uh, the gradient m now equals to negative a over b, but this is the same as tan of an angle theta from just uh, the algebra. Uh, 
because uh, that is the gradient m of the line which is this line m1 uh, we can call maybe m2 but since the line pb which is the line joining p to b and ax plus by these two lines are perpendicular they are perpendicular lines uh, means that if you take the gradient m1 times m2 this is equal to negative 1 we know the gradient m2 so this m, m1 times m2 which is negative a over b this is equal to negative 1 this means that the gradient m1 equals to b over a and because this is uh, line m1 is the line pb from the diagram, the, the sketch diagram that we had, we can easily say that this gradient is the same as tan of an angle theta. So from here we have now tan of an angle theta equals to uh, b over a. That is tan of an angle theta. What if we square this, say square both sides? If we square both sides here, we'll find that uh, this will be now tan squared of an angle theta equals to b squared over a squared. But tan squared from trigonometry is just uh, sec squared of an angle theta minus 1 because 1 plus tan squared equals to sec squared. So uh, tan squared is just sec squared minus 1 and this is equal to uh, b squared over a squared. Taking 1 on the right hand side, we'll have uh, sec squared uh, say the sec squared theta equals to b squared over a plus 1. Combining these two expressions, we'll find that it is a squared plus b squared divided by a squared. That is what we have. But sec squared is 1 over cos squared theta. This is equal to uh, a squared plus b squared over a squared. Now we can just reciprocate this to get cos squared, uh, cos squared theta, which is equal to uh, now a squared divided by a squared plus b squared. You can just take square root, take square root both sides. Now we get uh, the expression for cos theta will be equals to uh, plus or minus a divided by square root of a squared plus b squared. So that is what we can get. Uh, for the expression of cos. So in the place of cos theta, we have the substitution. Now we need the substitution for sine theta. So you can just write it here, the expression that you need. Uh, Okay, now let's find the expression for the sine theta. Uh, again, from, from a tan of an angle theta, we have seen is equal to b over a, but we know that tan of an angle theta is sine theta divided by cos theta, which is equal to b over a, and uh, sine theta for sure will be equals to b over a times cosine of an angle theta. But of course we know the expression for the cos theta is plus or minus a divided by radical of a squared plus b squared. So this is now b over a times plus or minus a over square root of a squared plus b squared. That is what we had. So you can see a simplifies and finally you get it is plus or minus b uh, divide by square root of a squared plus b squared. That is the expression for, for sine theta. Now we have all that we need into, uh, in our equation. We just uh, make substitution for expression of sine theta and cos theta in equation number three. Now equation number three becomes, so equation three now becomes, becomes uh, distance d equals to a, x1 plus b, y1 plus c. This is negative, divide by a times cos 
our expression for the cos theta is uh, plus or minus a divided by square root of a squared plus b squared uh, plus b. The expression for sine is negative plus or minus b over uh, a squared plus b squared and a radical sign. That is what we have. So we just simplify this and now we have negative ax square ax1 plus by1 plus c divided by um, a times a you get a squared so this will be plus or minus a squared over radical a squared plus b squared plus uh, this is now b times b will be plus or minus b squared over radical a squared plus b squared uh, further simplifying we we'll get uh, further simplifying here we'll get uh, negative a x1 plus b y1 plus c divided by you can see the numerator uh, the denominator is the same we can just combine the expression so it will be uh, plus or minus a squared plus b squared divided by square root of a squared plus b squared so that is what we have negative divided by plus or minus is just change uh, now uh, the, the sign changes to be minus or plus because negative divided by positive is negative and negative divided by negative is positive so here now we'll have negative plus ax1 plus by1 plus c divided by a squared plus b squared divided by square root of a squared plus b squared. Looking clearly at this one, uh, this expression can be written as plus or minus ax1 plus by1 plus c uh, divided by, this is a squared plus b squared, we can just write as square root of a squared plus b squared times square root of a squared plus b squared then divide by square root of a squared plus b squared. Now you can see these cancels remain with plus or minus uh, uh, a x1 plus b y1 plus c divide by square root of a squared plus b squared. So finally, because this is plus or minus, we can just put in the absolute bracket as uh, a x1 plus b y1 plus c divided by uh, square root of a squared plus b squared, which is the required expression. Now, this is the shortest distance of the point P with coordinate x1, comma y1 from the line a x plus b y plus c equals to 0. It's just the absolute bracket. This absolute bracket is because we here would have uh, plus or minus expression. So we have shown, so we can just write here, hence, hence proved. Okay. So we are done with the second part of, of our question. Now let's see the third part of this question, which is, uh, of course it's all about uh, coordinate geometry one. The question is, find the uh, locus of a point which is equidistance from the origin to the and the point negative 2,5. We need to find the locus of a point or the location of a point, uh, point x, y, which is equidistance from two points. So I can just sketch the, the diagram as follows. Okay. the question is what is the locus of a point which is equidistance from the point negative 2,5 and the origin so the, the locus is equidistance from the origin we know in mathematics origin is 0, 0, and the point with coordinate negative 2,5 we need the locus of point P with coordinate x, y the information that we had is 
this point is equidistance from these two points, which means if we find the distance from P to the origin, is the, just the same as distance from P to the point negative 2,5. So we can sketch this as, uh, can just sketch the diagram. This is X, uh, sorry, this is Y axis and this is X axis. Uh, and the point, this is, the, say, I assume this is negative 2 and this is 5. So the point uh, negative 2, 5 is here and the origin is here, which is 0, 0. I can just assume my point P, say, is here with coordinate X, Y. And if you find the distance from this point to the origin and distance from this point to the point uh, negative 2, 5, this say distance 1 and distance 2, the, uh, the point is equidistance means that uh, 